viewers, this is Bhavna Bhatia and I welcome you all to 19 Influencers Talk on COVID-19 series in association with TechXP. Today we have with us somebody who was a farmer for 20 years, scientist for 20 years and an entrepreneur for 20 years at the age 60. Currently he leads the clinical chemistry laboratory Thyrocare which is present in 10,000 cities in 10 different countries focused on wellness. A company with zero debt, in April 2016, Thyrocare conducted its initial public offering to get a stellar subscription of above 70 times and become a company of 3,000 crores in NSE. A highly focused uh, leader romancing with risk, viewers, today I present to you an incredible mentor and an infectious motivator, MD Thyrocare, Dr. A. Velumani. So, Dr. A. Velumani, firstly, a very, very warm welcome and thank you for joining Hi, us. I go ahead. I will be very happy to address the, the questions uh, which you would have. Sure. Proceed. Sure. So, Dr. Velumani, for the first very question. Now, you say that you've tested 15,000 for COVID testing. Now, what is your feel about this pandemic as a business leader? Yes, we have... Uh, started testing only one month back and within four weeks we have completed a 15,000 analysis. It's a costly test and uh, everybody cannot afford and it costs around 4,500 rupees. Uh, unfortunately, the testing does not give solution. When I say unfortunately, had it been giving solution, it would be very difficult to even cater to the needs. So much will be the surgeon requirements. Here it only helps you to quarantine the man. The management of COVID is not different. And it is uh, therefore in, used in a limited quantities. Having said that, my feeling about COVID is we cannot avoid COVID. We are only delaying it. Sure. The lockdown was essential, at least lockdown one. Uh, it was to delay the onset of the peak. We have even the peak. But then lockdown two came. Okay, that also was sounding um, as, as, you know, maybe needed. But certainly not lockdown three. But uh, having said that, government has to do what their intelligence advises. But as a businessman, I feel lockdown three is more damaging than more salvaging. Sure. So as a feeling of COVID is, COVID, you can't escape. You have to face it. The positive minded starts thinking how many deaths per million India has. It's only three, three and a half. Whereas countries have 300 deaths per million also. So we are supposed to look a little relieved positive. The negative man sees uh, how many are infected. Mm. And then that number swells today to roughly around 30,000, 40,000. And then he starts thinking, crying that, you know, Margaya. Mm. I think we need to look at it very positively. Percentage of people who have died on this earth is 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. Sure. 99.99% of the people are uh, living. There is, uh, though a pandemic called, it appears to be fairly safe. Got it. Now for my next question is that, uh, what do you feel a common man should know about this uh, pandemic? The common man should know that government regulations are not anything politically motivated. It is necessary. It is in spite of uh, destroying the economy. This uh, lockdown all have been announced. Sure. And uh, it is advised to be at home so that we can minimize the infections in the initial stages. Now common man should understand he needs to go out. He has to take care of his family, life and livelihood. And he is supposed to cover his, uh, mask his face uh, so that he doesn't uh, give it to someone and someone doesn't give it to him. 
no. still continue continue to be a safe distancing continue to have hand hygiene but trust me it is safe safe enough it doesn't kill all it kills only very very few you might get an infection but if you have a good immunity you will be uh, escaping and uh, india is safe because india has not lost even 100 of what the other parts of the world have lost so common man should have confidence without which he will die more of the fear not of the disease so sure. uh, you know that's very rightly put that uh, the common man might die of the fear and not of the disease right so now i'm leading to the next question which is what industries will have a new surge worldwide yeah and there is a uh, song in tamil and if i have to translate in english there are two kinds of people one who sees a stone in a sculpture other sees a god in it the one who sees the stone will not see the god and the one who sees the god will not see the stone there so he is an opportunity and a you know pain or a challenge sure so this covid is a challenge or a pain for many but for some it is an opportunity for some industries this is an opportunity the most benefited industry when you look at year 2025 5 years from today will be healthcare because people now value health because uh, you know whatever bank balance the virus is not going to be challenged but if you have an immunity you are challenging the virus and you will live without any impact of it so today people will empty their bank balance for finding a good health with high immunity so the health care will be of primary importance and people would love to know if there are methods available to know how healthy he is what comorbidities he would have so uh, this industry is going to be a very big industry the second is wellness fitness nutrition ka ka ke p p ke log so jate the now you can't afford to do that you have to find how best you can have a wellness that is uh, keeping illness away and how to keep your body fit and how to eat correct so that your body is in a better shape with better wellness and with a better immunity the third thing is the personal hygiene if you suddenly see now every uh, dress you purchase will come along with a matching uh, mask so sure. so will be um, anything which you apply in your face in your hand in your hair everything which will protect you from virus will be sold everything will pre- prevent infection whether it is covid or anything else will be sold and man will be very very different towards uh, the personal hygiene we will not use toilet the way in which we used we will not touch the knobs in rails in workplace as we carelessly did so a lot of changes will be there and those industry also will be benefited i see these three industries distinctly finding advantages and they can surge ahead because globally this is the most important three in uh, areas of uh, business which will get attention So thank you so much uh, Dr Velumani for telling us about the industries which will have a new surge now moving to the next question is what industries do you feel will have an adverse impact due to the covid worldwide could you please tell us on that yeah bhavana there are infinite number of industries when we look at the type of companies available but for brevity we can consider 10 major industries and i said three industries which would have a kind of support and surge because of covid and let me talk about the three industries which will suffer because of the uh, unfortunate uh, unexpected arrival of covid sure. if you look at the way in which uh, even the biggest uh, uh, investor in this world uh, warren buffett has admitted that he had invested too much on airlines and he regret first time in his life only because this pandemic has upset all his calculations so if you look at singapore airlines or look at lufthansa or look at uh, uh, what you call as uh, delta airlines sure even in india the indigo the fleet standing dozens are in such a distress i don't think this many flights will run this much frequency will be run especially international flights 
so that industry is the worst hit number two industry is uh, the travel and tourism which was uh, you know doing a lot of revenue for every country in terms of foreign exchange for us now kashmir is not that valuable goa is not that valuable so is singapore and uh, thailand so is mauritius and uh, Ma maldives so all these will have a disruption it may take some more time 5 years 10 years for people to forget it but then immediate next 5 years the tourism industry also will be suffering the third is all uh, what you call as banquet halls sure where, where you conduct uh, marriages to events to political to various things was uh, happening each big uh, star hotels had a uh, ten banquet halls and all of them at the times were busy it provided a lot of employment lot of fun lot of challenge a lot of uh, uh, entertainment now that will have a very different approach because anywhere more than 30 40 people will be very difficult to accommodate and then even we can't socially be closer shake hands to you know the so called greeting with a kiss all are gone will have a very different world so in my opinion these three are the worst hit the rest will have some some advantages cost cut because of lessons learned from covid some gains because you need to have some kind of controls of behaviors to some kind of expenditures in sanitizer these and these infection sanitizers and everything will count sure and uh, also dr binomini i want to ask you about what advantage will india have post covid globally and this is very very important very heartening i must elaborate this disease has uh, been told it doesn't spare rich poor doesn't spare religion doesn't doesn't spare countries doesn't spare anything but there is a bias by this uh, pandemic the rich are more harassed poor are not harassed the rich countries of western world has lost more deaths per million india has lost less deaths per million because india is an young country so one is rich second is old so yeah. they suffer india is young and india is a poor country luxury of poverty i used to call and let me tell you we were living in unhygienic conditions so our body got used to every stupid pathogen today this pathogen appears to be one more pathogen not the pathogen so there are clear advantages for india and india will not lose financially that much india will come back to normal say very fast india will not lose uh, number of people that many so there is a clear advantage i think uh, uh, india and china will have a unique advantage both of them will have 2 3% more gdp than the rest of the west which used to be big countries with less gdp will now get into negative gdp sure so what happens these two countries will grow double those countries will not be able to grow but uh, india would have taken 50 years to become number one economy in the world without covid mm -hmm. with covid india will be within 25 years number one and this is though i am 60 years old i have a reason to believe i will see the journey of india surging ahead much faster not because of just the disease impact alone it is because as such india was really cruising and this is couldn't stop it so this is how i interpret and i want all entrepreneurs all business leaders to think that japan become a very powerful country only because japan had to see hiroshima nagasaki 60 years back Sure. that was the biggest distress and if today for the last 40 days we are under lockdown this is first and unique of kind of we have experienced it will have certainly a lot of positive impact on our journey and people who are as young or as you are will have a much much clearer uh, tomorrow at least for next 40 years and congratulations for all of you well in advance because the jogernat is on the roll and india will be certainly be the most powerful country by the year 2040
All right, so very, very uh, strong prediction right there. 2040, India will be the strongest uh, power. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Willamani. It's always a pleasure and honor, and it's great to always chat up with you. And thank I'm you. Good luck. Really benefit from whatever you've discussed. So thank you once again.